At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a very spicy deck list featuring Niv Mizzet Reborn. It's a 5 color control deck, also known as the Quest Killer, since we can easily complete any daily quests playing the deck. And we've got the full four copies of Niv Mizzet Reborn, 5 mana for a 6 6 legendary creature with flying that says when Niv Mizzet Reborn enters the battlefield, reveals the top 10 cards of your library for each color pair or each guild. Choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them and then put the chosen card to your hand and the rest goes on the bottom in a random order. So we're trying to leverage Niv Mizzet by including as many cards out of the different guilds as possible. So when we cast Niv Mizzet, we get to draw as many cards as possible and try and leverage that card advantage to win the game. As well as of course getting a 6-6 flyer for 5 mana, which isn't a bad deal. So we've got about 3 cards out of every guild to try and maximize our chances of drawing as many cards as possible with the Enter Battlefield ability. There's a lot of approaches to building a Niv-Mizzet Reborn deck. We went with a singleton approach, so outside of 4 copies of Niv-Mizzet Reborn and 4 copies of Chromatic Lantern, which can help us ramp into a turn 4 Niv-Mizzet, as well as fixing our mana for all our other spells. We've got all singletons, all one-offs, including our mana base, so that keeps the gameplay exciting but also gives us a lot of options during the gameplay, since a lot of these multicolor cards are split cards, and then when niv Mizzet happens to find multiple cards out of the same guild, we have to choose one of them, so having cards that can help us in different situations is helpful. So let's take a look at our entire decklist, but first let me quickly sort the deck a little bit better, since the mana costs of split cards don't always uh, line up properly. So, let's take a look at our entire decklist here. At 1 mana we've got Carnival Carnage as a cheap removal spell dealing 1 damage to a creature, but we can also cast it for 4 mana against creatureless decks as a discard to deal 3 damage. At 2 mana we've got Depose Deploy, which we can cast for 2 mana to tap something down draw a card, or for 4 mana to make some 1-1 one -one Thopters and gain a bit of life back. We've got the Spark, which can exile a permanent with Convert Mana Cost 4 or greater. Thought Erasure as turn to hand disruption, which can also help us surveil and set up our next draw step. Tyrant Scorn Scorn as another versatile removal spell that can also bounce a creature. Discovery Dispersal, nice that we can cast it with both black or blue mana on turn 2, so the draw smoothing that Discovery provides is very useful in a 5 color deck, and then we can also cast Dispersal for 5 mana, bouncing something from the opponent, making them discard. Then we've got Angras Rampage as another versatile card that can make the opponent sacrifice an artifact, a creature or a planeswalker. We've got Assassin's Trophy that can destroy any permanent, giving the opponent a basic land in return. Justice Strike can destroy a creature by making it deal damage to itself equal to its power. Then at 3 mana we've got a Knight of Autumn in Celestia that can help us gain a bit of life back, make a 4-3 or destroy an artifact or enchantment. We've got the Fairy Time Raveler that can bounce something, draw a card and can also nerf opposing control decks. We've got a Mortify that can destroy a creature or an enchantment. Then we've got Ionize, which can counter target spell and deals 2 damage to that spell's controller, and is pretty easy on the mana for just single blue, single red. But Devil's a little bit more difficult at double black and red to destroy target artifact, creature or planeswalker at instant speed. We also have Deafening Clarion as our first sweeper effect, dealing 3 damage to each creature, and can also give our creatures a lifelink until end turn, which is nice if we have a Niv-Mizzet in play. And then we've got some ramp and mana fixing with Kiora Behemoth Beckoner, which can untap our lands to help us ramp into a turn for Niv-Mizzet, and then also draws us additional cards whenever we play a creature with power 4 or greater. And then Chromatic Lantern also helps us ramp into turn for Niv-Mizzet, as well as fixing our mana for all our other spells. Then at 4 mana we've got another split card in Thrash Threat, we're often casting the Threat half, making a 4-4 red and green beast token with Trample, but we can also cast a Thrash half as a removal spell for opposing creatures or planeswalkers, if we already control a creature ourselves. We've got Kaya's Wrath as another sweeper effect, destroying all creatures. We've got Ral's Outburst as a deal 3 damage to anything and draw one of the top 2 cards of our library at instant speed. We've got Solar Blaze as another sweeper effect, making each creature deal damage to itself equal to its power, so it's a just a strike for each creature in play. We've got an Ajani, the Great Hearted, which can help us gain a bit of life back and can also distribute plus one plus one counters, which is nice if we have a bunch of other planeswalkers in play. And one of those other planeswalkers is Tamio, Collector of Tales, which can help us return cards from our graveyard, and the plus one can help us dig for a niv Reborn or maybe a Chromatic Lantern, which are the four offs in the deck. And then of course we've got the full four copies of niv Reborn, which is the centerpiece of the deck as well as one Teferi Hero of Dominaria at 5 mana, as an excellent card draw engine that can deal with any non-land permanent from the opponent. 
And then at 6 mana we've got Ravager Worm as a 4-5 with Riot, so either enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, or with Haste. And then when the Worm enters the battlefield we can find an opposing creature, so use it as a removal spell, or it can destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability, so it can destroy a flipped Legion's Landing, search for a scan tower treasure map for example. We also have a Vraska Relic Seeker as another versatile planeswalker that can generate pirate tokens or destroy artifacts, creatures or enchantments with the minus ability. And we also have Casualties of War, where we get to choose one or more between destroying an artifact, creature, enchantment, land and or planeswalker, so it can potentially lead to a 5 for 1, which is pretty sweet. And finally we have two X spells, Hydrate Crisis can draw cards, gain life and put a threat in play, and Expansion Explosion, we can use Expansion to copy something sweet from the opponent, or maybe counter an opposing counter spell, and Explosion can also draw a lot of cards and deal a lot of damage. And the mana base is very straightforward, one basic swamp and then one of each check land and shock land in each color pair, as well as three copies of Gateway Plaza, but I chose the different arts for each copy of Gateway Plaza, so they're technically still different. Could also include a Rupture Spire instead of a Gateway Plaza if we wanted to switch it up a little bit. And here you can see the deck sorted by guild, so we've got about three cards in each guild. Some of them only have two, but three for the most part. So that's the deck, now let's jump into zone games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play and we've got a reasonable looking hand. Some good control elements as well as Chromatic Lantern in case we pick up Niv. And uh, Lantern pretty important to help us cast these red spells. And we'll lead with the tap land here. Sometimes it's actually better to save the shock lands so we can play them on turn 3 if we don't have the matching uh, check lands. But uh, there's Niv Mizzet, there we go. Perfect, so. We've got a turn 2 Assassin's Trophy lined up, turn 3 Lantern, hopefully turn 4 Niv Mizzet. Up against the Burgle Rat. Um, do we discard a Clarion or a Bedevil here? I think I'll ditch the Clarion. But I'm not gonna trophy anything. Alright, this one comes into play tapped at the moment, so that's kind of what I mentioned with sometimes it's better to uh, keep the shock land, but for now we'll just play the lantern. Alright, not a burglar rat. We could be greedy and discard the land, since we won't be able to play Niv next turn with this land anyway. But I think I'm gonna lean towards just ditching the trophy at this point. Alright, Solar Blaze. Not gonna blaze the rats here. Just gonna pass a turn with Bedevil at the ready. And next turn deploy Niv, hopefully. Blood Divination, sure. Opponent gets to draw three. Hopefully we get to draw more than three here. There we go, draw five, not bad. Get it to Fairy, Mortify, Vraska, Worm and Knight of Autumn. Often have to discard to hand size after resolving Niv, but that's okay. Uh, what are we ditching? Could be the Solar Blaze, could be one of the spot removal spells. I guess I'll ditch the Mortify since we have a Knight of Autumn to deal with enchantments and Bedevil is a bit more flexible as it hits Planeswalkers as well. Opponent might have something like a Playcrafter here to kill our Niv. Double Lunar Elves and there's a Playcrafter. So Solar Blaze could clean up the Elves if we want to, <laughs> another Niv. Um, Probably want to deploy some of our cards first before playing another Niv, otherwise we'll have to discard a bunch. So I don't mind Solar Blaze to clean up. And we'll try and leverage our card advantage. I wouldn't mind drawing an extra land here so we can deploy our 6 drops. Zealots. Into Fine Broker. Probably returning Playcrafter. I think I'll just play out Knight of Autumn, gain a bit of life. I 
That way we have a bit of protection against a playcrafter for when we do play something bigger. And I don't want to discard to hand size. Not a burglar rats. What are we getting rid of? Could be the expansion explosion since we're pretty far from needing more card draw. Although it could help us maybe hit a land drop. The post deploy, pretty good against playcrafter as well. So I think now I'm just gonna say go. And then keep up the post deploy and ionize. And trades some of these 1-1s. One Another fine broker. The fine broker loop is pretty annoying. But once we get to 6 mana we can start deploying some of these heavy hitters and we'll be okay. So we can... Play the worm first, which helps us protect our Vraska. Just pass the turn for now. And as soon as we empty our hand, we can play another Niv and refuel. And there's a Playcrafter. Maybe a fine finality, getting something back. Finds the fine broker and playcrafter. Alright. More nivs. We probably want to keep up ionize here if we can. So I'm just gonna Teferi. And then just plus since I don't really want to bounce anything at the moment. That's more like it. And stay back with the worm. Playcrafter, I'm gonna let resolve and then sack the ferry. Keep the worm. But I really need to keep up eye nice for the fine broker here to stop the loop. More playcrafters, fair enough. I guess we let that resolve. And then I'll bedevil the other fine broker. And then we need to keep up eye nice for the one they have in hand. And hopefully stop the loops. Another fine finality? Oh boy. Alright, well, they're not gonna run out of cards anytime soon here. So I guess the plan is Vraska, make a token. And then we can sack the pirate to the playcrafter. So I think we're okay now. I replace the playcrafter right away after playing a land. Frasca's down. Alright, can we play Niv with Counterspell Backup? We can. So let's do that. Alright. Can choose between a Wrath and a D-Spark. But our opponent scoops him up. Niv Mizzet was able to outgrind our opponent eventually. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent looking hand. We've got plenty of mana fixing with Lantern and Plaza. And then a uh, Krasis to ramp into alongside the ferry. Up against the turn one breeding pool into Temple Garden. So let's go ahead and play our lantern. And we can play a turn four to ferry. Let's see if it gets countered, gets absorbed. 
It's too bad. Alright. I guess we run out a hasty worm. Could also play Crisis for X equals 4 and draw two cards even if they counter it. Maybe that's better. Alright, they have the Frilled Mystic. Still get to draw our cards and now the Ravager Worm can kill the Mystic. And there's Niv Mizzet, so that's the card we really want to resolve. Although this Wilderness Reclamation is going to make that tricky. So we really want to resolve this Knight of Autumn to kill the Reclamation. So I think we'll lead with Rampage, making them sack a creature. And if they have another Frilled Mystic, they might run it out. They don't. Ah, let's try this. And grow Spiral. And Knight Resolves. And then we'll kill the Reclamation. And we'll see whether or not we can uh, play our Niv Mizzet here. I think we go for it. If our opponent could counter the Knight of Autumn, they probably would have done so. Alright, not bad. Draw 5 here. And we need to play this tapped or untapped. I guess we can Thought Erasure. See what's up. Alright, lots of 5 drops. Reclamation Sage, destroying the Chromatic Lantern would have been pretty painful, actually. And our opponent's gonna concede, alright, well... <laughs> Niv Mizzet claims another victim, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable looking hand. We've got the Plaza for fixing, can cast the Rampage, any land gives us Outburst and Tamyo, so... I think we keep, and then of course we've got our Niv Mizzet, which is our key card here. So which land to lead with? Might be the Blood Crypts. That way there's a chance we can play Rampage on 2 if we draw the appropriate land. But then we can go Plaza into Hallowed Fountain and then some Petal Grove comes into play untapped after playing the Hallowed Fountain. Sequencing the lands in this deck can definitely be tricky. Opponent with Flower. Alright, let's just run out uh, Plaza here. So we've got perfect mana, can just hard cast and if miss it on turn 5 without needing Chromatic Lantern. Thought Erasure, not bad. Let's have a look. Alright, so looks like a mid rangey deck. Don't need to take the status statue. Some of these tokens are annoying, but we've got plenty of sweepers. Don't have much exile based removal, so I think Seraph of the Scales is probably the most annoying threat here that they could run out next turn. Even though I guess it dies to the outburst. I think I'm still taking the Seraph though. Chromatic Lantern seems good enough, even though Status Statue can destroy it. I'm still gonna keep it. Play the tapped. Opponent plays Call to the Feast. And I think we just play Lantern into Rampage, make them sack one of their tokens. Because if they deploy Trostani, those tokens are going to hit for quite a bit. Alright, our opponent has a tap land, so they can play Trostani, but they will kill our Lantern, that's okay. Gets in for two. Ravager Worm is an answer to Trostani. So we could play Tamio, get back our Lantern if we wanted to. I think we just run out Niv. And only draw two cards, sadly. Hit quite a few lands this time, that's okay. So now if they want to kill Niv, they can play Trostani and we can block their tokens with Niv if they play Trostani. So we don't take too much damage. 
And we've got some nice cards to work with now. Bedevil at instant speed works well alongside the fairy if we can pick up one more land. Can always use Tamio to dig for additional copies of Nuf, although we just put one on the bottom with the uh, enter the battlefield trigger of the first one. It's gonna be an untapped land. I guess they could give their token Death Touch after playing Trostani with a status half of status statue, but then we simply don't block. Alright, they're just gonna kill Nif. And what's the follow up with two mana here? Alright, opponent's just gonna scoop him up. Fair enough. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And how do we like this hand? It's not amazing. But we do have our Nif, which is, of course, a pretty good reason to keep. And our deck mulligans pretty badly, so our hand needs to be real bad for us to consider mulliganing. So I think we keep. Could have been decent to not play the Breeding Pool on turn 1 and save it for turn 3 instead. Opponent's got a Duress. They're probably going to take Tamiyo. And there's a Lantern, perfect. So these both come into play tapped. So we could have considered saving our Shock Land for turn 3 since we didn't have Check Lands that came into play untapped. Now I'm just going to run out this Chromatic Lantern and hope it resolves. Opponent's got a negate, sadly. Psychic Corrosion from our opponents. Alright, we've got our Ionize up now. As well as Outburst, which we can always point at our opponent's face. And we do have a decent amount of enchantment removal in our deck. That one will counter. The fairy can minus to tuck the psychic corrosion as well. Most of our lands let us cast Niv Mizzet here. Alright, Knight of Autumn can destroy the enchantment, so seems worth it. And a Rootbound Crag. This comes into play untapped. We've got black, red, white, blue, green, so we can cast an if Mizzet if we wanted to. I think we just play the Knight of Autumn, get this countered, and to move on with our lives. It's gonna be a sabotage. Well, that's already two Niv Mizzets milled. Alright, time to go for Teferi here. Try and run them out of counter spells. Alright, it's gonna be a Chemisters. Mills us a bunch with Corrosion. Think I'm okay minusing. Alright, opponent's gonna draw into the Corrosion and replay it. And now we get to resolve Niv Mizzets. Do we plus with the Fairy first? I guess so. Keep up the pace. Play Niv. Uh, we do have to think about which lands to potentially keep up here, in case we need to, like, Thought Erasure our opponent. I think we've got mostly blue and black cheap spells. I think I'll keep up the... Summit if we can, so we've got red, black, blue, green, white. Play Niv. Alright, not a bad haul. So we can put a stop on our end step and then uh, play this Mortify. So untap two lands. And more to find a Psychic Corrosion. Alright, so we've got a Teferi in play, a Niv in play. Some cards in hand to work with. Disinformation campaign is okay. 
Uh, probably getting rid of the deafening clarion here. Can't imagine needing that in this matchup. Augur Bolas. What does it find? Finds a Contempt, which they can't currently cast. Alright, let's plus. Let's skip to the good part. Solar Blaze. So let's see here. Can attack. And we can cast a pretty big explosion here. So we'll flow two mana. And cast explosion for x equals six, targeting our opponents. And our opponent has seen enough, awesome. So yeah, Nif Mizzet, definitely doing some work here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw and we keep having Nif Mizzet in our opener, so I won't complain. And then Lantern and Cura to help us ramp into it, as well as Tyrant Scorn, which we can even cast on turn two. So easy keep. Can even go turn two, Tyrant Score, turn three. Some Petal Grove also comes into play untapped, so pretty much perfect mana. Facing the red deck with a turn two Burning Prophet, which we can kill with our Tyrant Scorn. So we probably want to kill it before it gets to Scry. So I'm just going to kill it right now. And the next turn, probably leaning towards Lantern. Over Kiora, but it's close. Like, how likely can our opponent kill Kiora next turn? Getting to draw a card off of it is pretty sweet. And we should have enough uh, colors to be able to cast Niv next turn. Let's say we play a Sun Petal Grove, then next turn we can uh, play a Blood Crypt. And then we have blue, black, green and white. So yeah, that should work. Yeah, let's go with Kiora. And if our opponent spends a bunch of burn spells killing Kiora, then they're not burning our face. Opponent goes face. So Kiora is probably safe here. Alright, that's a lot of damage. Down to 11, take 3 from Chain Warlord down to 8. But we've got a turn for Nif to help us stabilize. And a Knight of Autumn can gain us some life as well. Interesting to note, Knight of Autumn does not trigger Kiora since it's a 2-1 with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on ETB. Doesn't enter as a 4-3. So let's play a red mana here. Gonna have to take two, sadly. And then make red, blue, white, green. Untap one of our lands. And cast Niv Mizzet. Alright, not a bad haul. And then our draw from Kiora as well. What do we discard? We might not have time for Expansion Explosion. A Jani can gain life, so that's nice. So I think we get rid of Expansion Explosion. Don't really want to bounce anything with Teferi. So I think we get rid of Teferi as well here. Alright, Frenzy. Can blow that up with our Knight of Autumn if we want to. So, let's see here. Can we go Chromatic Lantern into Knight of Autumn? It's probably a good place to start. And then just pass a turn here. And Niv can stay on defense. And then next turn we can start gaining some life with the Jani, perhaps. Steamkin is okay. Ionizer's backup is great. Alright, so let's play a Johnny. I'm just gonna start plussing. I will teach you I must. And then I'll untap a land. Play the stats. 
And we can even attack with Niv, which has Vigilance, thanks to Ajani. So we can start clocking our opponents. Alright, I think we've got all the angles covered here. Ionize for any future frenzies. We're gaining life, we're dealing damage. Opponent gets in with everyone. So they probably have a burn spell to combine with the first strike on Chain Whirler to take out Niv. But then we can simply thrash to kill the Chain Whirler in response. And I'm happy trading for the Steamkin with the Knight of Autumn. Or we can bedevil the Chain Whirler, that also works. Wizard's Lightning. So I'm gonna bedevil Chain Whirler in response here, I think. And hopefully they don't have another 3 damage burn spell lined up. Alright, it's just a shock, so the Steamkin survives. But uh, so does Niv Mizzet, which is the important part here. Alright, so we've got a wealth of options. Probably gonna keep plussing with uh, Ajani. Tamio can get back any number of these cards in the graveyard. But I think I want to keep up Ionize if we can. So where does that leave us? Probably just gonna make a 4-4 here. Draw a card with Kiora. Justice Strike is a perfect answer to the Steamkin. Uh, do we need to untap a land? I guess it's not even necessary here. Since we can't keep up the Justice Strike as well as Ionize. Alright, let's pass a turn. And then next turn we can try and close out the game. Can just counter the Pyromancer, deal two to our opponents. And then if Mizzet can attack for lethal. Could also minus on the Jani to put some counters everywhere. But that should do it. Alright, sweet, so... Managed to beat the red deck. But we did have a pretty excellent draw with turn two interaction into turn three ramp into turn four Niv Mizzet which isn't going to be the case every time. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand seems okay. Kind of uh, just guy control at the start of the game with Ionize and Clarion, and eventually Expansion Explosion, pretty far from those casualties. And also no Niv Mizzets in sight, so definitely not a perfect hand, but seems keepable enough. Our deck mulligans pretty badly, so our hand needs to be pretty atrocious for us to consider mulliganing. Let's run out to Blood Crypt for now. And then we can maybe Clarion next turn, depending on what they play here. Dreadhorde Butcher. Yeah. We could wait and try and get more value out of this Clarion, but then the Butcher's gonna deal more damage as well. Doesn't seem worth it. Our D Spark can maybe exile something as well at some points. Shields down on Ionize, so they can resolve maybe a Judith here. Instead of the Grim Initiates. And a Priest of Forgotten Gods, makes sense. Justice Strike can take out the Priest, sadly. So we're just gonna play the staff to say go. And counter their next relevant play. Don't have any real sweeper effects lined up, so I think that's worthy of an ionize. Alright, Vraska, so... We'll uh, pass a turn for now. And hope to pick up Chromatic Lantern, I guess. Doom the center, not much we can do there. Take one. Alright, there's a Chromatic Lantern, perfect. So that'll give us access to a potential Vraska next turn. Or a Casualties of War, taking out a Red Source and their Priest. Opponent gets in for two. Probably want to keep Justice Strike to maybe answer a Judith. 
Another Doom Dissenter. Opponent says go. So yeah, this uh, Priest can still be activated. Which uh, might be an issue here. We can cast Explosion for Axe equals 2, taking out the Priest as well. So what happens if we casualties, killing the Priest, they can sack the two Doom Dissenters. Deal us 2, down to 8, have two Zombies and a Grim Initiate. And if we play Vraska, they can just make us sack the Zombie, which is not great. I guess if we play Vraska and Minus, they might send the Zombies at our Planeswalker. That could be reasonable. Yeah, I guess we'll use Vraska as a distraction here. Alright, your opponent declines to use a priest. Wants to keep those Doom Dissenters around. Maybe fearing another sweeper effect. They can kill Vraska with what they have in play. But now we can try and cut off their red mana with the casualties. And then they'll just have some 1 1 creatures instead of 2 2s. I'll last at that Reaver. Alright, let's uh, cast the casualties. Destroy a land and a creature. And which creature do we take out? Probably the Reaver. So not the most high impact casualties ever, but... Still reasonable. And if they play another Lasso Zap Reaver, we can kill the Zombie Army token with uh, Justice Strike. So just want to pick up a Niv Mizzets to help us stabilize, just some creature to block with, I guess. So we're down to six. Opponent says go. Discovery Dispersal. So we can cast an explosion for four here. We can do it main phase to hit our land drop. It's probably reasonable. Target the zombie army. And draw four. And there's an Avmizzet, perfect. Play Stomping Grounds. Hope to survive another couple turns here. But if they can hit a red source, we're probably dead. So take three down to three. And another Lazo Tap Reaver. Yeah, they might be able to just go wide enough now. So gotta play Niv and hope to draw into a sweeper maybe. Alright, there's a Chaos Wrath. Although I guess uh, a sweeper's not great against all those Doom Dissenters. So we have to play two removal spells here to survive basically. And Carnival can be one of them. So where does that leave us? We can Teferi minus on something, like the Grim Initiate that they can't replay. I think that's okay. And then keep up Carnival for one mana. Another Niv lined up. Probably gonna get rid of this D-Spark. Doesn't seem too useful right now. Alright, opponent finds red mana. If this is a Judith, we're just dead. Opponent sends in everyone. I think I'm actually okay blocking the Doom Dissenter and then killing the other one with Carnival so we can cast the Chaos Wrath to wipe the board. And get rid of those zombie tokens as well. So we're down to one. They get another zombie. And what's the play? Grim Initiates. 
Alright, so we can plus. Can even cast a Chaos Wrath at instant speed now. So let's attack. And uh, let's see, I guess we can play the plaza. And then say go. Cast Chaos Wrath during the opponent's turn. And then also maybe play a threat at instant speed. I guess our opponent could be playing around Settle the Wreckage, but yeah, in our Nifmas at Reborn deck, there's no place for Settle the Wreckage. It's Chaos Wrath. Opponent gets their Grim Initiate back. And we'll play a threat. Alright, Hydroid Crisis was a perfect top deck here. It's plus. Here we go. And X equals 8 here. Helps us pad our life total. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. So very close game here. And niv at Reborn able to carry us once again. So yeah, the deck is a ton of fun to play. And the singleton nature of the deck keeps it interesting even after playing it for a while. It's not going to win any tournaments anytime soon. The deck definitely has a fail rate. Every now and then you'll have a hand where you can't cast a single spell. Or you never draw niv it, and then you're playing kind of a mediocre five color control deck. But when it all comes together, it's amazing. Definitely got lucky to draw niv at Reborn in every game today. That's not going to happen ever every time, so that made the deck look a little bit better than it actually is. But regardless, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.